My name is Emilia Simeonova, and I will be presenting joint work with Vadim Elenev, Alessandro Rebucci, and Luis Quintero on the direct and spillover effects from stay-at-home orders related to COVID-19. When we had um, stay-at-home orders from COVID-19 until recently, uh, one of the differences that happened in the United States as opposed to other places was that these orders were implemented at the local level. Every jurisdiction made their own decisions on when to implement these orders and what kind of orders to implement. Different restrictions on mobility were implemented at different times uh, in different locations. Now, when policies are well designed, they have effects on the intended population. But sometimes these effects may extend beyond the immediate target population or area and spill into neighboring entities. When we're talking about public health policies intended to prevent the spread of an infectious disease, it is particularly likely that these policies may have effects that spill over into areas that are not the direct target areas of those policies. What were local governments trying to do? Let's remind ourselves, the idea was that when mobility is restricted and people have less contact between each other, the germs are less likely to replicate, we're slowing the transition vector of COVID-19, and therefore the pandemic is going to die down. Different types of policies were implemented, and in this study, we studied the most restrictive of these policies, stay-at-home orders or lockdowns. Now, when we're talking about local policies and about restricting mobility in the United States in particular, it's important to remember that the United States is very connected, very connected on the traffic level and on the economic level. What we show here in this map is the share of traffic in the county originating outside of the county. Now, as you can see, the median county in the U.S. has about 15% of its traffic originating in counties that are other than that county. And there are some counties that are particularly well connected to other counties, having up to about 80% of their traffic originating in other counties. When we're talking about local policies and in particular stay-at-home orders, that is important because a lot of the, the transition and a lot of the connectedness in the county between people is probably happening across people who are not residents of that county. They're residents of other counties and are passing through that county. At the same time, we have this staggered um, policy implementation. And here we're showing the implementation dates for different areas of stay-at-home orders in the US. They vary from mid-March in the San Francisco Bay Area to never somewhere in, 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 in some states in the middle of the county. And there is substantial variation at the timing, in the timing of this policy implementation. Now, when you couple this variation in the timing of policy implementation of stay-at-home orders or lockdowns with the connectedness between counties, um, does it matter for the lack of policy coordination? What does lack of policy coordination imply? Well, it depends. And what it depends on is how people react to these stay-at-home orders in the counties that are not directly affected by the stay-at-home order. If people compensate for restricted mobility in their local county by increasing mobility and contacts in neighboring areas, then the uncoordinated policy implementation is suboptimal. Why? Because if I'm prevented from going to restaurants and shops in my area, and I go and shop and go to restaurants in the neighboring area that does not have a stay-at-home order, then I'm taking my germs to the neighboring area. And so my local policy is in fact making the conditions in the neighboring area worse if everybody is going in the neighboring areas. On the other hand, if neighboring areas respond to local stay-at-home uh, orders in the same direction, meaning people in neighboring areas restrict their mobility in response to the index areas stay-at-home order implementation, then the lack of coordination may not be as problematic. So um, in this case, again, people who are not directly affected by the stay-at-home order are acting in a way consistent with that order, even though they're not under that order themselves. So that is what we study. We are, we are studying how the implementation of the stay-at-home orders in the United States affected mobility in the counties in which these orders were implemented 
and in neighboring counties that are likely to have been affected by these orders because they are connected to the uh, original counties where the orders first happened. We use SafeGraph's weekly, weekly traffic data, which has uh, been used in many uh, similar studies. We also use county level data on uh, stay at home order implementation from Keystone Strategy, which is a consulting firm. And importantly, what we do in order to estimate spillovers is we focus on triplets of counties, where one county implements the stay at home order at least four days before the neighboring county. So we have enough variation in the timing of implementation. And then we have a third county that is geographically close to the neighboring county, but not well connected through traffic to either county. And that third county, which we call the hinterland county, is our control county in this case. I want to show you where these counties are located. These triplets of counties are located. As you can see, they're all over the United States. They cover about one third of the area, total area of the United States, and also about one third of the total population of the United States. Many of them are located across state borders because once again, we have the restriction that we need to have at least four calendar days difference in the implementation of stay-at-home orders between counties, but some of them are located inside the same state. Again, because counties decided when to implement stay-at-home orders um, by themselves. Uh, um, the, the graph that I'm showing you here pretty much summarizes our main results. It's an event study that shows the evolution of retail visits in the county that directly implemented the stay-at-home order, which is the dark uh, black dots with the confidence intervals around them, the, the, the bar lines, and in the neighboring county, which did not have a stay-at-home order, but is close to, is neighboring, the county that did have a stay-at-home order. Those are the squares, the, the light gray squares um, in the graph. As you can see, before the implementation, hardly anything happens. Once we have an implementation of a stay-at-home order, that's its time zero, we have a precipitous drops, drop in the retail visits in the direct county that implements the order, that's the black dots. But we also see an effect in the county that hasn't implemented the order, but is neighboring the county that implements the order, which we call the spillover effect in the light gray squares. We see both of these effects in retail visits. We also see effects in the fraction of households stay completely at home. As you can see, again, the direct effect is very strong. We have much more households staying at home in the county that implements the stay-at-home order, but we also have an effect in the neighboring county, a spillover. And we see the same effect in our spend completely at home uh, as measured by where the device is located. So overall, we find strong direct effects of the stay-at-home orders in the counties that implement those orders, but we also find substantial effects uh, in neighboring counties, which we call the spillover effects, which are about half to a third of the size of the direct effects. Um, now, the question is, well, why is this happening? Right? What are the mechanisms? How does this work? Well, first, the people in the neighboring locations may reduce mobility as a response to the stay-at-home order, what we call this information channel. They see a neighboring county implementing a stay-at-home order, and they realize, oh, this is bad, we're just going to stay at home as well. But it's also possible that this is more of a mechanical effect, whereby traffic from the county that implements the stay-at-home order drops, and therefore we have less traffic in the neighboring county just mechanically because people are staying at home and they're not going to the neighboring county either. We try to unpack this in, in, in two ways. First of all, we look at counties that share the same media markets versus counties that don't share the same media markets. And here in this slide, we show the effects um, in three different subsets. These are the spillover effects in the neighboring county from stay-at-home order implementation. The uh, gray bars are the effects in the subset of uh, counties that share the same media markets, and the yellow bars are the effects in the subset of counties that do not share the same media markets, and the green are the average effects that are across the entire sample. What we see here is that pretty much across all outcomes considered, the average effect is driven by um, counties that share the same media markets. So counties that share the same information and the same media markets have much stronger spillover effects in neighboring counties from 
the implementation of stay-at-home orders that counties which do not share the same EMR. Models. This is very strong suggestive evidence for the presence of an information channel whereby people restrict mobility in response to uh, information they receive from the other county. When we decompose the total spillover effect in the county that, that, that hasn't implemented an SA, the, a stay-at-home order, we find about 11% of total traffic decline. So even if you haven't implemented a stay-at-home order, you have 11% decline in traffic. 3% of that decline is due to this external traffic channel, which is a mobility mechanical effect, more or less. And about 8% of the total decline is due to the information channel. So people react to the information, they restrict their own mobility in response to a neighboring county implementing a stay-at-home order. What does that mean um, in, in, in relation to this um, discussion about coordination versus staggered adoption? And there's been a lot of discussion about this in the media. And here we have to emphasize that it, it's important to consider and keep in mind when we're talking about um, coordinating. So if we are gonna, if we work to coordinate uh, stay-at-home orders in the very beginning of, of the stay-at-home order implementation, that would be the 16th of March, that would be the green bar, everybody implements at that time. Of course, that would be a dominating policy because you would have a lot of um, much more restrictions everywhere and probably it would be, uh, you know, it would be superior to the staggered implementation. But that confounds the early implementation with the coordinated implementation. What is more likely and a more fair comparison is if we consider the purple bar, which is if we implemented stay-at-home, um, uh, coordinated stay-at-home orders in the middle, meaning at the mean date of implementation of stay-at-home orders in the United States. And when we com com compare that implementation to the gray bars, which is the standard implementation, in the presence of spillover channels and the spillover effects, we, which go in the same direction as the main effects, um, it is less clear of a comparison and less clearly in this policy, the, the coordinated policy, this is, is, is not clear that it dominates uh, the standard adoption in terms of total effects. So um, the takeaway from our study is that uh, we have substantial spillover effects um, which go in the same direction as the main effects of stay-at-home orders and these need to be taken account, into account when we consider the total effects of stay-at-home orders and the staggered adoption of those orders in the United States.